Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now I'm bringing out a bite-sized piece is today, fantastic news for the cryptocurrency and digital asset market. Uh, all of a sudden, Elon Musk comes out of nowhere and says, hey, guess what? You can buy a Tesla with Bitcoin. So this is great news for us, but that's really not the big story. The big story is in conversions. We'll go over that in just a bit. Also, we're going to talk about how Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong owns close to 14 billion of company stock ahead of the market debut, which uh, I thought was going to be an IPO, but it's going to be a little bit different. And it looks like uh, Brian could be doing a little bit of dumping. And then uh, we'll finish off with just a couple of great information pieces. Mad Money's Jim Cramer says gold let him down, put 5% in Bitcoin. And this is one of the smartest things I've heard uh, anybody in the uh, traditional finance sector actually say. And then we'll finish off. Uh, with a little snippet of information where institutional investors stake over $100 million in the Theta network. And this is probably why, or one of the reasons why, and we've been talking about this actually a lot lately, of why Theta has gone through the roof. So we'll go over those pieces, but first let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today it is uh, March 24th. It's high noon, El Paso, Texas time. And uh, here's what we got. Uh, total market cap of uh, $1.75 trillion. And we were kind of in a... Um, I wouldn't say a downward spiral, but uh, moving a lot of sideways action and really not too much going on. Now, all of a sudden, we've got a little bit of information from Elon Musk saying that he's going to, you know, uh, accept Bitcoin for his fantastic cars and maybe the Cybertruck. And uh, all of a sudden, everything turns around. So it's amazing what one man's tweet and the actions of uh, one company can really change the entire trajectory of what is going on in cryptocurrency market. But that, <laughs> that's exactly what uh, happened. So looks like uh, even the daily sentiment is a little bit uh, uh, bearish, but here's what we have. So Bitcoin, <laughs> quite a rally, 56,445, and it's up uh, just a percentage point. But I, like I said, I thought we were going to go down a little bit further. I thought we were going to touch around 52, even 50K, but Look, if you're a, a TA person, these are the things that you just really can't account for when some, you know, mythical unicorn comes out and says, hey, this is what we're going to do. It's just, it's impossible to really take into account and just kind of ride the wave. I feel sorry for anybody who is trying to short Bitcoin at this point because they got wrecked pretty hard. And uh, I'll probably hear those stories in the uh, comments sections later, I'm sure. Anyhow, Ethereum down a little bit, Binance Coin, anything up a little bit? Anything really fantastic besides... Ugh, even Theta took a little bit of a, of a dip today. Uh, and it's, we're around 1287, but uh, what a magnificent run. I mean, we, uh, just like six months ago, I think it was under a dollar. I remember when I was talking about it and I bought it, it was well under, I think it was under 50 cents when I got it. And, uh, and here we are, but um, it's, a, it's a pretty good project and we'll see how much, uh, what kind of legs it actually has. And that's really what's going on. Let's just take a look. Actually, you know what I should do is uh, blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh. Can't do that. Let me see here. One hour projected range. Let's take a look at what could potentially be the next big thing. This, of course, is Trade the Chain, where we use sentiment analysis, uh, BTU protocol, no idea what this is, Harvest Finance, Storage, The Key, and Electronium. So if you're a trader, I am personally am not, uh, maybe those will be something to look into as the sentiment analysis looks like it's uh, looking pretty good. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the markets. Let's take a look at what's going on in today's top story. So this right here is what it's all about. Again, uh, you really can't get much bigger than this. And uh, I remember when PayPal came out and they said they were going to uh, offer Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum. And that was a pretty big story. Then like uh, two, three weeks later, we had Elon Musk coming out and say, yeah, we're going to buy 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. And I have to tell you, even I was a little bit skeptical because I thought it was just, it was a pretty good, you know, play to do that type of thing. I know Michael Saylor with MicroStrategy had really been in the news and had talked about that uh, at length. And he'd actually talked to Elon Musk about uh, doing this. So uh, I didn't really put much weight into it. I thought at some point they would actually sell. I knew Michael Saylor wouldn't sell, but uh, here we are with Elon Musk going, hey, you know what? This is what the tweet says. Um, you can now buy a Tesla with Bitcoin. And there's this Next two pieces, I mean, that's great information. It really is. You can buy it with Bitcoin, great. But as soon as I saw this, I said, it's not going to make a difference unless they keep it in Bitcoin. Because the reason is, is because everybody out there, all the gold bugs, and uh, one of the more famous ones, who I never say his name on this channel because he is the biggest shill out there. Cannot stand that guy. Um, 
because, and I'm going to tell you why I can't stand him. It, it's because he has single-handedly wrecked so many people who could have gotten into this market and made a killing into it. And he just pretty much sent them off this way so they could just go sideways. Look, I own gold and silver. Uh, I don't want to get off track, but it just really ticks me off to think about it every single time that I, I talk about these gold bugs. Anyhow, um, I will just say this, that when you have this type of information come out, and you really look at, at what is going on, it's a, it's, a, it's a positive for the cryptocurrency market, that is for sure. But again, uh, I just thought that uh, all the different uh, naysayers would just be like, well, that's great, but all they're gonna do is just take your Bitcoin, put it into fiat cash, and then probably just buy gold, silver, and whatever else. So you suckers fell for it again, but that's not what, ha what is happening here. Uh, it states here, Tesla's using only internal and open source software and operates Bitcoin nodes directly. Bitcoin paid to Tesla will be retained as Bitcoin, not converted to fiat currency. So right there, that is, it's a really good statement and, and a forward thinking one at that uh, by the Elon Musk to actually put that out and go, you know what? I know what people are going to say. I mean, let's be honest. He's not a, <laughs> he's not a dumb guy. So it only makes sense. He would uh, be a little forward thinking. Think about a couple steps ahead. So this is great. Now people can't come to us and be like, oh yeah, that's good, but they're just gonna put in the money. No, they're gonna keep it in, into uh, Bitcoin. And I have said in the past, and I know people have talked to me about this, like, Rob, you don't understand. The institutions are here. They're never gonna sell. And I'm like, you know what? I know Michael Saylor is never gonna sell, but the rest of the people, I'm not gonna put my faith into it. So now I can add uh, Elon Musk to one of those groups who I think may not uh, ever sell Bitcoin. So he really does get it. But what about all the other hedge funds, other big players, institutions, other uh, manipulators and whales out there? Can't account for them. So again, I really can't say what's going to happen in the future for uh, the bear market, how long it's going to last. But I can just tell you this. At some point, what goes up must come down. Things cannot go up forever, but enjoy the wins because this is a winner of a day. And before we go on, I just want to tell you that uh, I got to tell you. I gotta tell you that I took a look at the uh, Tesla website and I just did a little quick design for a nice spiffy Model X uh, at, a, at a nice uh, bargain bin price of 105,490. And as you go down, scroll down, I was like, yeah, there it is. They've already implemented it into their website. So you can actually, <laughs> you can actually buy it with Bitcoin. So if you order with card, there's your, your stuff right there. When you click on Bitcoin, it's the same thing. First name, last name, email address, phone number, and you give $100 non-refundable place order. Now, in this type of thing, it's only 100 bucks. So you probably just have like, a, you just send your Bitcoin address over there. Not for sure exactly, but they would probably contact you and be like, these are the steps. This is what you need to do so you don't screw up and everything else. But I just thought it was interesting that they actually had it there already. And it was just like ready to go. Not like hey, there's an announcement to an announcement, AKA Je uh, Justin Sun. It's like, hey, this is what's going on. We have everything in place. Let's do this and off we go. So that is what's going on with Tesla. I think it's a pretty uh, great move and uh, we'll see how it all works out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, this is a quick one because when I saw this, I'm like, oh, this is pretty good, I mean, good information. But uh, there's just this little snippet that I just didn't, uh, I didn't really get until I read it a couple of times. So as you may know, or may or may not know, uh, Brian Armstrong is bringing Coinbase uh, public and they're going through the whole procedures, which I think will be a great boom for cryptocurrency market. Regardless of what you or I think about Coinbase, some people love it, some people despise it, whatever. Um, but for this, it's just going to be good for us in the long run because all the different um, People that are out there that, that say, you know what, this is a, this is a a this is used for drug money and this is used for the cartel and all that BS stuff that you hear for you know for so long. Well, now we have a public company and this is what we got. And well, not to mention the fact that uh, Voyager, the brokerage, that's a public company too. It's trade on the stock market. So just saying, uh, we are definitely rapidly uh, gaining legitimacy. I'll just say that. So this is what the article talks about. Armstrong, Brian owns 39.6 million Coinbase shares. Good for that guy, good for him. His stake is worth 13 billion based on an average private market share price this year of 343.58. So this guy's got a lot of money. I mean, he already had a ton in the, in the beginning and now just going public, uh, I can see why people would go through the whole hassle of going through this because it's a boatload of dough. 
Armstrong will be able to sell shares right away after Coinbase goes public. That's because there's no lockup period as part of Coinbase's, Coinbase's direct listing, which differs from an IPO, that the company doesn't raise fresh capital, but instead allows existing shareholders to sell stocks on the open market. And then it just finishes up, says most of Armstrong's wealth has come in the past uh, as the value of Coinbase's stock and private trades jump more than temple. Sure, okay. So this is what it really comes down to. I'm interested to see what you think about this. <laughs> if you were around in like 2017, you remember that uh, there was a Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, uh, there was a listing on Coinbase. And when Bitcoin Cash got listed, there was this huge run up in price. And it was, it was amazing at how much actually Bitcoin Cash was bought up the days before the listing. So there was a lot of funny business going on, but uh, that is what it is. And then of course, after it was uh, listed, then it went up to a crazy amount and then it was just dumped. And that is one of those things about the cryptocurrency market. We're always worried about who's gonna dump on us. You know, How much are we gonna buy before the rug gets pulled? So my question is this, and you can answer this in the comment section. Do you think Brian Armstrong will just be like, he'll go in, he'll have a ton of shares of like, okay, thanks suckers. And he does the same thing in the cryptocurrency market that, well, people do in the cryptocurrency market that might actually happen in the traditional market where you just go, here's all the shares. I'm just gonna dump and be a billionaire and then off I go. Or do you think he'll do the smart thing, hold on to a uh, large amount of those because he knows as time goes on, uh, things will be worth a lot. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. That will be interesting to see. Let's move on to our next to last piece, which is this. This is the thing I always talk about. So Jim Cramer, he was on with Anthony Pompliano on his uh, podcast. Jim Cramer's not a dumb guy. He's pretty smart, traditional markets. He's uh, got a pretty popular show. People like to watch. I don't watch it at all, but uh, apparently it's very popular. But uh, he says the smartest thing ever. He goes, look, don't put everything into Bitcoin. Just put a little bit into Bitcoin. And what's great about Jim Cramer saying this is like, I don't care if Jim Cramer says this. I, I don't care who says really anything about, about Bitcoin, but it's the people that aren't here now that don't really understand it, that are trying to get in, like wrap their heads around it. They're like, okay, well, I don't really know what Bitcoin is so far, but I know that Elon Musk says he's taking uh, Bitcoin for his cars. And I got this guy, Jim Cramer, which I watch every day, uh, you know, uh, right after Jeopardy, or whatever it's, I don't know what's on. And uh, I trust that guy. So I, I don't know what's going on, but I trust that guy. So I'm going to buy into Bitcoin. Sometimes it's like, uh, it's like my friend CJ over at Micro Rebellion says, he goes, sometimes you just got to, you just got to purchase things first and then do the research later. Uh, I think it was Soros who said that, but it's the truth, right? At some point you just got to kind of pull the trigger. So this is what's going on with this little piece here. This is a direct quote. He says, I have for years said that you should have gold, but gold let me down. That's okay. Gold let me down too. I mean, look, I invested in, into it for quite a long time. Didn't really do too much. And people always talk about, well, it doubled. Okay, great. Well, what did Bitcoin do over the last 10 years? Gold is subject to too much vicissitudes. It's subject to mining issues. It's frankly subject to failing in many cases. And this is why we talk about uh, Bitcoin is superior to gold. However, will gold go away? No, it will not go away. Gold will be here until the end of time. It has been here since the beginning of time. Well, again, this planet will say. So why not? Kramer was then asked if he expects other investors will dump gold and buy Bitcoin in the way he described. And he said, look, if they listen, this is the important thing. He says, if they listen to me, and he knows good and well that people listen to him on everything that he says. So when he's going to talk about Bitcoin to people who watch his show, which I would guess the demographic is probably 35 to 65, lots of males, America, probably UK, maybe, I don't know, Australia, but a lot of, a lot of people in that demographic have a good amount of money. They're probably going to listen to him, probably going to buy Bitcoin. He says, if they listen to me, they're going to drop half their gold. I've been saying 10% in gold. I've been saying 10% in gold since 83. And now I say 5% in gold, 5% in Bitcoin. That makes sense. I don't know why the traditional market players just can't say that. Like, look, it has been a decade. You know, I, I know we missed the ball on a couple of things, but maybe you should put a little bit of money, just a little bit into Bitcoin, one, 3%. You know, if you're feeling uh, froggy and, and risky, go 10. I don't know. And then before you know it, they say, hey, that's a great play because gold hasn't really done too much for me. I know I'm a genius. And then off they go. I just don't understand why they just can't be like, you know, conservative enough just to go, hey, don't miss the boat on this. This is a great hedge. Put it into Bitcoin. And if they all said that, 
I think we'd have a much bigger market. And then lastly, he says he clarified that he did not think about investing. He did not think about investing 5% of, of his portfolio in Bitcoin until very recently, claiming that he has thoroughly researched the subject to come up with his recommendation. That's great. You know, if he can do something like that. And Kramer, uh, he's been talking about this for a while, and he's been actually the same thing as like Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, talking about how it's not going to go anywhere. Bitcoin's not going to do anything. But as more people learn about it, and they go, I get it and I'm going to get into it. He admitted that he was skeptical because he had done fine with gold, but now realized that the only way to protect his assets in terms of insurance is with Bitcoin. And I think that's the big thing. So as people start to listen to Kramer a lot more, especially on that channel, you're going to see a lot more people come in. Older generation, probably people with a lot of money, and uh, away we go. So let me know what you think in the comment section. And that is it for that piece. And I just want to finish up real quick with what's going on with Theta. Um, I've been covering this the last, I mean, I've been talking about Theta for on my channel for quite a long time. And uh, it just comes down to this. Uh, Theta had the, their second US patent approved just last week uh, for micropayments. Uh, the first one was, um, um, was all about bandwidth and all things that they actually do over there at Theta. So on top of that, now you had uh, institutional investors stake over 100 million in the Theta network. So if you don't know Theta, they have, as far as their, their enterprise validator nodes, they've got some pretty big players, you know, small people like Google, you know, those types of places. And now they got private equity investors, uh, um, Sierra Ventures, Heuristic Capital, VR Fund, and GR for a fund. And they put in over uh, about 100 million. And that's a ton of, let's just say it's a ton of money. And these different types of players have over 2 billion and assets under management. So when we take a look at uh, what happened with Theta and how the price has just skyrocketed, it's because a lot of people, looks like a lot of smart money looks at it and goes, you know what? We know what's happening right now. We know what people could potentially need. So let's forward proof or let's future proof what's going on and invest into the next big thing. And they've picked Theta. So if you haven't gotten some, I can't, this is not financial advice, but uh, I would definitely do a lot of research into Theta as to why it could be big. I will just say this on Theta. And that's that. What are you doing right now? You're watching me on YouTube. It takes a lot of bandwidth. What do you do? What do your kids do? Uh, you know, when they're, not playing sports or whatever they do. They're probably playing games. They're probably streaming games. They're probably doing a lot of things online. What do a lot of people do as far as business goes? Well, a lot of businesses have gone online and they do a lot of things on Zoom. You know, I do myself. So when you take a look at all those things, what do you need? You need bandwidth. And what does Theta do? Well, it can put bandwidth on the blockchain and places that need bandwidth. And there's a lot of places that are gonna need that a heck of a lot more, especially uh, YouTube. They work with YouTube to organize and get them more bandwidth and uh, <laughs> make uh, 4K and HD streams actually possible, especially moving in the future. So if you think that bandwidth is important, I think I do, then uh, take a bigger look into Theta. And that's it. So look, that's it for today. No one a little bit long, sorry, there's a lot of information, but uh, that's what's going on. If you liked the video and found, uh, found value, give it a thumbs up, that always helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing, a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks for watching, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.